You know, successful people go through funks too. And I want to give you five steps on how you can get out of those funks. It's so true. And funks can be, you know, they can, they can last a minute or they can last weeks. It's kind of up to you how long you want them to last. People think all the time that people that are successful don't know what it's like to go through struggles. They don't have funks. They think, oh my gosh, they've made it to a plateau in life where they no longer have a funk that they go through. They don't understand where I'm at. And the truth is, that's not true at all. We ain't know exactly what it's like, and every one of us have funks that we have to go through. What we have found the secret is, is that we get through the funks faster than most people, but we also go through more funks than most people because we're going for bigger goals. The bigger the goal, the bigger the dream, the bigger the funk. It's true. And, and like sometimes it's hard to imagine, you know, you get to a certain place in life like, oh, those people have it easy. They have people to do everything for them. But uh, but like like you said, like the bigger the bigger the goal, the heavier that weight is on your shoulder. And, you know, you, you build a company and you've got more people that are that are counting on you. So it is yeah. it's 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 it can get very heavy. And if you don't know how to work through those funks in a, in a speedy way, yeah, um, it can be really challenging. So what's a funk? Right. A funk is when you feel awful. It feels like everything you do in every place you turn, nothing is working for you. You truly start to feel like you want to give up. Yeah. And I think people look at you and I and they say, oh, Glenn, always his energy is always going. He never has a funk. And the truth is I get in some pretty big funks from time to no, time. No, you don't, honey. Yeah, she'll throw me <laughs> on the bus here. But anyone who lives with an entrepreneur, if you know, we go through those funks, those ups and downs, because the bigger the goal, the bigger the funk, like yep. I just said. So I think it's important that you know how to get through them. I want to tell you right up front, the real secret to being successful is in getting through those funks. Yeah. And 95% of people will, will quit on their way to the goals. The first, some people, the very first time they get resistance or that funky feeling sets in, they quit. They they get stuck. They either quit yeah. or they get stuck in that. And, it, and it's, it's almost like going through the five stages of grief. You know, if you get stuck in a phase, that's not healthy. you got to be able to move through them. And, and like feelings aren't good or bad. And it's good to like realize that they come and go. And the same is true of a funk. The funk can come and go. Just don't get stuck there. So we're going to give you five tips yeah. On how to not get stuck in the funk. And you're good. It's a phase. It's a phase. It's like raising yeah. kids. We always say when raising kids that it's your kids go through phases. Well, you and I go through phases. As an entrepreneur, you're going to go through phases where things are going great and you think that you're Superman and you can tackle anything. And then all of a sudden, something comes along and wipes you, you. Punches you in the stomach. Punches you in the gut and <laughs> knocks you down. You're like, oh my God, this sucks. But the real secret is the only way to fail in life or in business is to stop moving forward and to quit. That's the only way to fail. Yeah. Because as long as you keep getting up and keep moving forward, you will be successful. So don't be like the 95% who quit. Be like the 5% who are successful. And the only reason we're successful is we push through those funks. And remember, quitting might not sound like quitting because you may not say to yourself, well, I'm going to quit right now. What you say to yourself is, you know, now is not the right time. Right. You know, I just I knew this wasn't a good time for me. I, I knew I, I knew I didn't have the education for this. So you make a lot of excuses. Yeah, I'm going to put this on hold for a minute. Does that sound familiar? I'm going to put this on hold or I'll do that goal later when the kids grow up. Or you know what? When I have more free time, I'm going to do that because I don't need the extra stress in my life right now. And the truth is, if nothing changes in your life, nothing's going to change. So you're just kidding yourself and you really are quitting. You're just disguising it as something softer to make your own psyche feel better. And I hate to be brutally honest with you. Actually, I don't hate to be. I want to be brutally honest with you because I want to kind of knock some sense and say, listen, you've got to make sure that you're being honest with yourself. So let's talk about the five steps. Yeah. The first one is going to be managing your thoughts. And this is... Ah, uh, your thoughts. This is really, really huge. And so I know when I'm in a funk and um, I have funks in business and I have funks in parenting because it's like sometimes I'll feel like I didn't do things Never right as being a wife, parenting. though. She never has a funk in being a wife. I noticed that <laughs> didn't come out of her mouth. Did you notice that? That's never happened. So no, she's been, she's a great wife, but, but still didn't admit to it, by the way. I noticed that, but go ahead. <laughs> Would you like to get really personal here? I mean, come on. That's what the audience wants. Um, so, so whatever funk I'm in, um, I I use a lot of self talk, and I can get I can beat myself up pretty good about you know it, parenting especially. Like I, I seem to be a little more forgiving when it comes to like business stuff, but parenting in particular, like I just want to do it right. Like I don't want to screw up my kids more than absolutely necessary. So I can get really hard on myself with that. But but I have to use self talk and almost like 
reparent myself and try to figure out, you know, and tell myself, okay, just because you screwed up and, and maybe yelled at your kids today doesn't make you a horrible po- person. You, you just had a bad moment. So I, I use self-talk a lot to, to get me through the phones. Don't you think it's important, though, that people understand what their thoughts are first? Because I think people oh, don't sure. really – people don't take the time to think about what am I actually thinking about. Yeah. If you can sit back in a moment of quiet and say, what am I actually thinking about? What am I actually telling myself? You'll find that it's something like 98% of our thoughts that go through our head. There's tens of thousands of thoughts a day. The majority of them are negative. They're a, they're a protective thought that we have. We have conversations – we have thoughts about old conversations, how, how we would have handled things differently. And even stuff from a decade ago, you're our, like, you our know, childhood. I, yeah, our, yeah, I wish I would have done this differently. Or what if this would have happened? We have all these things that don't matter in our heads. It's our brain just processing information at rapid speed. And so if you're aware of those thoughts and you start to say, wait a minute, that's a negative one. And it's just start to change one thought at a time. I think, it, you know, it's not – expected of you or me to change our thoughts automatically. Like not all of our thoughts are going to change overnight. Pick one thought that you're having on a regular basis. Maybe it's about your business. Now we're real estate investors, but maybe it's your business, whatever it is. And you're saying, I can't do this because, and you have a negative thought. I'm not winning because this is never going to work. I keep failing. I keep failing. I keep failing. I've had that same conversation well, with myself and you catch me on it sometimes. You're like, well, we got to stop what we're thinking about. Yeah, and and just to kind of like piggyback on top of that, the the it, when once you learn to become like really aware of your thoughts and and really they're stories that we're telling ourselves. And that's the thing I like about thoughts versus feelings is like feelings aren't right or wrong, but thoughts can be challenged. So so when it comes to thoughts in particular, you can tell yourself a story about like, I'm not successful because, right. or, or this person, um, this person treated me this way because those are all stories. We're making them up in our thoughts. And yeah. so you can challenge that. Okay. Is that really true? And so once you, that, that clicks and you can start challenging and, and recognizing your thoughts, um, and a really good book to kind of get you on the track to that is by Shad Helmstetter. It's called What to Say When You Talk to Yourself. And it's not, a very, it's not a very big book. You can get it on Audible, I'm sure. Um, but it's, it really kind of simplifies it and, and gets you on the right track with training your brain to think that way. We could spend hours talking about that topic alone, and maybe we will in a future video and future training. But right now, just remember that being aware of your thoughts is the first step to learning how to change your thoughts and just change one simple thought a day and see if you don't find a better outcome for yourself and getting through that funk much faster. Because the only reason you're in a funk is because of what you're thinking about. And And challenge your thoughts. Challenge your thoughts for sure. Number two, this one's pretty simple. Change your state. Now, what do I mean? It's been proven that if you change the state, in other words, what environment are you in? If you keep going to the same office and you're in a funk, go someplace better. You know what I do? I go to the beach. I can walk to the beach from my house and I'll do that. That's my place I go to. When I lived in New York, I'd walk down to the river and I'd walk there. That was a place to go that was not the place that was funky, right? I want to get away from the funky place. I remember that, one time you were in a funk and it was um, really, really cold and there was snow on the ground and I made you go outside and walk in the bare, walk barefoot in the snow just to like change your state and like I kind do. of snap you out of it. I remember the barefoot part, but yeah. is that right? Yeah. Yes, it doesn't surprise me you made me do that, but that's... <laughs> Again, I can't make you do anything. I know. Well, well, but you encourage, and it's right. You know, you're right. You got to. You got to you, change your d- thought. Change like, your state dramatically, though. Like, like, don't just do something right. minor. Like, dramatically change your state. Like, get in the car and blast the music as loud as you can. Right. That's it, well. Or, that's environment, right? So, to right. change your environment, right? You want to change what you put in your head. So, go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like, um, take a cold shower, splash your face, maybe slap your face, or get your. Hey, that could be fun. Like, have somebody else slap your face. You notice how she just volunteer for that? <laughs> volunteer to slap your face? Yeah, great, super. That could be. Fun. So, but I think exercise is really important too. Yeah. get those endorphins yeah. going in your body. Now, um, make sure that you do something that really gets your blood flowing. In other words, if you want to go out and go exercise, go for a walk. If you're not, if you're physically not, if you're physically able, go for a quick sprint, sprint for 50 yards or hundred yards, really get that heart pumping for a second. And you'll, you'll be amazed. It'll change. It'll change how you're viewing the situation. When your heart gets racing, your body just changes when you start thinking about yeah, that. Yeah, lately you've gone out on the jet ski a few times. Like you have a, a little bit I of do. a rough day and you'll go take the jet ski and just like I do. That's, put I, the pedal to the metal. And I didn't know you noticed that. Yeah. But when I'm having a rough day, I'll go out, I'll get in the jet ski right where in our backyard. I'm like, wah, I just take off and I go. And I do that because it gets my blood. And I'll look for a big yacht going by and I'll jump the waves. And I'm like, boom, and I get my blood flowing and it gets me in a better state. So change your physical state, your emotional state, your mental state by doing these things 
to your body and to your senses. And if you do, you'll stop thinking about the funk even for a moment and you realize, wait a minute, I can change my thoughts. And fr quite frankly, that's a fun way to do it. If you're if you are a competitive person, go play some sports. Go play pickleball. Go play basketball. Go play tennis. Go you know whatever it is for yeah, sometimes you. Sometimes it's just like that release. Go punch a punching bag. Like anything that kind of helps you get those just yes. feelings out. So that's number two is change physical, physical state. Number three is gratitude. This has been a game changer for me. If you can focus on the things that you actually have in life, as opposed to all the things you want or don't <clears throat> have at the moment you'll find that you'll be a much happier person and much more content because happiness and gratitude is a state of mind. It's a state of mind. Wealth is a state of mind. You, if you are in America, the odds are you are wealthier than 95% of the world, believe it or not. You don't feel like you are because maybe you're comparing yourself to other people or what you see on social media. But if you focus on the things that you have, you will get more of them. So, how do you focus on the things that you have? I can tell you for me, every morning when I wake up, I've got my body trained. It took a little while. Before I get out of bed, and if I lay there, if I'm awake before the alarm goes off, before I take my kids to school, I am thinking about all the things I'm happy for. My wife, the life that I have, the fact that I live on the ocean, the fact that I've got four beautiful, healthy children. I actually have some grandchildren. And I think of all the things that I have in my life that are timeless for me and that don't involve money and that don't involve all that. I think about all the success I've had over the years and I've had a lot of failures too. I find that even when I'm having the worst times and the biggest funk is when I have to really dig in to that gratitude. Yeah. I, I would say too, like when I, how do you spend your days without thinking about how grateful for you are for me? I'm assuming that's most of your day. I, all day long. I'm <laughs> grateful for you, baby. Sure. Um, but I think that that was a real turning point in my life, too, when I understood the power of gratitude because I was a self-proclaimed worry wart. Like, I was just anxious and worried about everything, and I'm not saying that I've perfected that. Um, but I will say that when I started adding gratitude into my life, like, I just became I, – I feel lighter. Like, I, I, I feel happier and lighter, and, yeah. like, the whole world – weight of the world's not on my shoulders anymore, and I, I take things more in stride. And gratitude – Gratitude is huge, and and it's it's kind of easy, you know. We all kind of live in our own little bubble, um, look through glass, look through the world in our, our own tinted glasses, and it's it's sometimes hard to. We recently saw a movie, and um, Sound of Freedom. Yeah, it was yeah. it was intense, and like you you you, it, it's even hard to like wrap your arms around how horrible some things are that go on in the world because we do live in our own little bubble and so when you when you realize you know what whether you have a little or whether you have a lot I guarantee that your life is better than a lot of other people yes so so you can you can always find something to be grateful for whether it's that the sun is shining or the simplest things or there's a bird chirping outside, or you that you're somebody that, that you're you alive love. today. Yeah, that you woke up breathing. We we start all of our meetings. We have meetings with our company. We have these different meetings we have for the company. One's called a level ten. So once a week, our companies we have we have three uh, large companies. So we start with these meetings, and every time the leadership team here's how we open the meetings. Give us two things that you're grateful for. You know what? What is your? We call it good news. What's your good news personally and professionally? And sometimes people will have a professional, you know, good news and they say, I, "Nothing today." And I always go, "I go, that's bullcrap. It's not nothing today. You're alive today. Do you realize somebody didn't wake up this morning? Right. Somebody's child didn't wake up this morning. Did you? Did your kids wake up? Then knock it off thinking about all the things that are bad for you. And they're always like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right." And I'm like, "I know I'm right." So focus on gratitude because gratitude and fear can't be in the same emotion at the same time. It's proven fact that you can't be fearful and grateful. Try it sometime. Try being nothing but truly, purely grateful and realize that all the fear in your life disappears, even for a few seconds. But the point is made. The longer you can stay in gratitude, true gratitude, the longer the fear stays away. And guess what a funk is? It's fear. Yeah. It's us telling us, it's us telling ourselves that a things story. aren't going to work out. It's a right? story. Okay. So, Number three, again, was focused on gratitude. Number four, take action every single day towards your goals. And I don't mean take action when it feels good and when it feels right. I mean take action all the time, even when it doesn't feel good, maybe especially when it doesn't feel good. Yeah, yeah. 
And it doesn't have to be massive action, although massive action is great, and you'll get massive results with massive action. But but not everybody, even, not everybody's wired to take massive action. Everybody, you might be seeing yourself. I can't take massive action. I'm, I'm, I have a hard time getting out of bed. I'm so depressed right now. What is a simple thing you can a do? A small step. A small step. You know, read a book. Look up. You know, what, whatever whatever it is that you're interested in. With us, it's real estate. So maybe it's getting online and, and looking up deals or finding a new neighborhood. Whatever it and is, watch those, this. don't be overwhelmed. Look up one house, one house. today. One, one house. Look for look for one house just to just to read about it, and then be done with it for the day. Take a little action. Yeah, just just even those small little steps will add up to to big gains if you keep taking them. But be consistent and don't stop taking those steps. Action will get more action because it's hard to be in a career or a field of something that you love and you start to take action to it. Like I said, hey, start with one house. Yeah. I guarantee you, you can't stop with one house. It's like eating chocolate. It you can't. Momentum. You can't. Create, yeah. Yeah, you're creating your own momentum. Yeah. When you eat chocolate, you get more. What, what's that? It, not adrenaline, but uh, dopamine uh, that comes yeah. out, or whatever. So that's why you can't stop. You eat sugar, it you need more sugar, right? Because you eat sugar, you're like, oh, that feels good. That tastes good. You want more. The thing that you love to do that has put you in the funk in the first place. Go back to the core of what it is, whether it's a business that you're running or whatever. Again, with us, it's real estate. But if you take one little simple action towards your goal, some days one turns to two because some days maybe you're in sales and you say, I don't want to make that phone call, but I'll make one phone call or I'll shoot out one text today. It's very non-threatening. And you send out one text and that person says, yeah, I'd like to talk to you. And you're like, holy crap, I have activity today. And all of a sudden that action leads to more action. And that's how you bring yourself out of a funk by taking little tiny steps. Don't expect that the one step will take you out of your funk. But expect that taking a step will lead you to more steps, and that will eventually take you out of your funk. Yeah, and the action might be just to get out of your funk. So you need to do one of the other things. You know, right. be grateful or change your mindset or <laughs> change your state or whatever. Good point. So, yeah. yeah, good point. Yeah, yeah, right. Every yeah, That's a great point. One, one of those things might be go sit in a cold shower, right? You know, that's the one step you have to do every day. Whatever the action step is for you, take the action step, all right? Yeah. Last but not least, and I think this is really important, is to, well, I'll let you say it. Yeah, it's to, to talk it out with somebody. You know, sometimes yeah. just like talking out your issues, somebody can help you challenge your thoughts, whether that's a coach, whether it's a mentor, whether it's your partner. We talk a lot. You know, it's, it's interesting, though, like sometimes it's better from an outside source, although we have plenty of good conversations about stuff and we probably do. help each other out of our funks because we've gotten really good at at being able to challenge each other's but that thoughts didn't without happen being an argument. That didn't happen overnight. Oh, no, it used to definitely be argument. That's a whole different video series yeah. you want to look us up for for couplepreneurship. You, well, that, that's coming, so you keep looking for that. Yeah, but but definitely talking it out with somebody can be really, really helpful. And if you don't have that person in your life right now, if you don't have that coach or mentor, even listening to something, even like you know, just getting on an audible and listening to a book that that is inspirational or whether you're, you know whether it's um, in your genre that you're interested in or whether it's a self-help book or whatever those those also help me is just being able sure. to like listen to somebody because it gives me some perspective and helps me get out but of talking problem. it out with somebody if you can find a coach or a mentor that's been there before you yeah. now make sure this is important be careful who you take advice from because you might wind up just like them so make sure the person you're getting advice from actually has experienced success yeah. because if they've experienced success, they've experienced failures and funks. I guarantee it. They may not want to admit that, but the truth is I've never met anybody that hasn't had tremendous amount of funks who's wildly successful. Yeah, be careful talking to people that are just going to drag you down further into that right. funk. You want find someone that's going to gonna lift you up. For sure. So you want to make sure that who you're talking to understands. So look for that mentor that's been there. They've been beat up. They 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 know what it's like. They, they can, get it. They can empathize with you, but then they can say, all right, but it's time for you to stop crying like a baby and let's do this. Pull up your big boy pants and let's right. go. <laughs> let's let's do this, right? Let's let's get through this because you can do it. And sometimes having that person be able to talk to you and say, you can do it, really is inspirational. Sometimes for me, it's my wife just saying, listen, this morning you said we're going through some challenges in our in one of our businesses right now and it's a pretty big challenge and I you say you walked out and said you you got this you always figure it out that little bit of confidence she gave me just kind of gets it made me remind me go yeah 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 I do and that's why we're talking about this with you guys today because I'm currently working through getting out of a funk myself so I know all about what it's like to get out of a funk like this I have to go through it on a regular basis so yeah. I hope these five steps helped you when you have your next funk you come into remember number one is manage your thoughts number two change your state whatever that be whatever kind of state that is Focus on gratitude, take action every day, and then talk it out with a coach, coach or a mentor. I hope that you found this helpful in your life and in your business. Go out there and make it happen for yourself. Get out, get out of that funk. Get out of that funk.